I don't normally do a lot of uh, calculator videos, but this is going to be one of this, which is a little bit torn up, you can see there. This is just the case. But this is a Radio Shack EC4012 scientific calculator, fully functional, for the time period anyways. I wonder if I can find like a date in it. I'll just get it out of its little pouch here and we will... I don't see date anywhere, but it is old enough that it has Tandy on it, Tandy Corporation. So my guess is late 80s, maybe early 90s. Compare that to today's scientific calculators. This is just an example. Look at the size comparisons. Now then again, this one has a lot more functions on it. And then, of course, for those that really feel envious, there is a calculator from... A, that was a cheap dollar store find that combines one of the other useful... Um, so right here we have our Radio Shack EC4012 scientific calculator from about maybe the uh, 80s-ish. Then we have today's scientific calculators, which you can see are significantly different. This one is bigger. And then if you're feeling really envious, we have this, which combines a ruler, another useful tool, and allows you to hook it into, say, a three-ring binder or something. And it's also got built-in backup solar power. Same thing can be said with this. And then if you're really feeling envious, we've got calculators these days that are done entirely in software, so they can be both normal and when it wants to behave with me, scientific. Okay, so let's power this one on. You see it has a single, single row display. Displays, um, I believe they would call those hexadecimal, but it's a seven segment display. Then we have this, which has dual line display. One is a whole bunch of pixels, I believe it's a five by five pixel arrangement, and the other is an eight segment display. It also has various symbols. I just gave it an error. Twice. The second function key is the same, although this one has a shift key, which is basically the same thing. But in addition, the newer calculator has the alpha key, which allows you to enter a whole bunch of letters. Which means nothing. And we still have the same display here, although this one can have more characters than the standard calculator. You can see it keeps moving. And it displays functions there. Now because of the limitation of this calculator, if you put anything in above the seven segment, or the sum of something is above the uh, display, it will give you an error. So let's see. Let's see. It doesn't give you an error. It gives you a um, scientific format, which is what that is. This will do the same, although you can put in a number of different characters. And with this one, it has a separate off key. See there. This one, you need to press Shift AC because of all the different various features. Logging up the rest of the keypad. You can see that it has various buttons. You have the uh, second function, Stat, 
for the stack function, or that's the on clear button. The uh, power off button, the um, I don't know what those are. Logarithmic is the, that one is. I'm not sure what the IN is. Second function, the pi key, sine key, the cosine key, the um, I think that's tangram or something, I don't know. Clear entry, your brackets, exponent, and a um, two multiplier, your memory controllers, Those are your uh, function keys, your four function keys, and then you've got your normal keypad with a negative. I didn't know that was a number. Compared with some of today's calculators, it is astoundingly thin, scientific-wise, actually, to be uh, more specific. And um, I'm going to try and open it and see if I can show you the batteries. I was unable to get it to open, but my guess is that it takes coin cells because it's so thin. It says it uses two alkaline batteries. should probably look up that cat number and see if I can find what it is. But that's, that just about does it for the uh, EC4012 LCD scientific calculator. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them down below. I uh, hope to see you next time. Till then.